Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Pink Tabletop Season 5. We are back, and we are so excited about what we have going on. I know you all see all of this melanin popping and all of this luscious cocoa butter coming through on your screen today. We've got three beautiful ladies here, and I'm so excited. We are talking about what is happening. And let me introduce the women that you see before you. Of course, I'm your host, Maria Reed. Um, shout out to our Women of Hope here at the House of Hope Atlanta. We love you guys for our show topics, and we got great topics this season, so make sure that you don't miss anything. But the young lady to my, um, I don't know which side she's going to be on, but the, in the black with this beautiful hair in front of her, smiling beautifully, that's Ms. Deja Stafford. She's our co-coordinator for the Women's Ministry. Beautiful person inside and out. She's just so lovely. Hey, Deja, how you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. <laughs> of course so glad that you're here and you guys next to her this beautiful woman that we have met and grown to love um, through our life university group she is one of our online members located in the beautiful city of memphis tennessee one of my favorite eating places y'all i'm so glad to have her would you all say hello to miss cat braxton hey cat hi <laughs> so glad to have you today thank you for having me i'm excited yeah, 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 yeah. And next to her, one of our beauty queens. She's a pretty girl, one of the prettiest women on our praise team. All of them are gorgeous, though. Um, and you see her all the time. She's one of our ministers. Um, she ministers the word, she can preach, and she can sing the word. She can do it all. And we are so glad to have her at the House of Hope Atlanta. Would you all welcome Nikki Brown, one of our ministers. Hello, Nikki. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Good. So glad to have y'all. So, okay, y'all, this is real pink table talk today. We are talking about topics. Ladies, I want you to get in the chat box and get ready to talk that with us because we're talking about hot topics, things that are going on in 2021. So get with us and let us know what you're feeling about some of these topics because they're really good. All right. Make sure you like and share because, you know, pink table talk is always good. All right. So first topic that we're going to talk about is going back to church, we're going back to church. Now, some of you who are watching have gone back to church, wherever your church may be. Um, but as for House of Hope Atlanta, we are still in virtual worship. And um, according to an article I got um, online, it says that um, uh, it's, the article is called Will Americans Return to Church After the Pandemic? That's the entitled article. And it said 92% of people who attended church before COVID said they returned but 7% said they're not coming back. They'll either be a virtual member or they may do like a first and third, a first Sunday in person or something like that. So let's say you guys, and I'll start with you first, Deidre. Do you want to go back to church? Are you ready to get in the house? Or are you ready to stay online? Well, you know, we've had our conversations and you know, at this church, I'm so ready. <laughs> but I'm yeah. to stay safe. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to catch COVID. So... I'm ready, but I want to be safe. Yeah, I want everybody yeah. to be safe. I get that completely. Most definitely. And that's the whole point for our church size. And I think, too, with a lot of churches and their sizes, you have to go according to, you know, and be spirit led. Because some people can go back and that's fine. But our church is really big and we have to have a lot of volunteers and some of our members, you know, and I just wouldn't feel comfortable. I wouldn't want my mom to be there right now, so yeah. I get it. I understand. Yeah. Um, Kat, what about you? Where are you at? You want to go in the house or, or stay online? Listen, I'm an e-member, so virtual is where it's at. Today, but absolutely, <laughs> when, we're, when we're able to be safe, <laughs> When we're able to be safe, then absolutely, I would love to return to in-person worship. But, you know, for me, virtual is where it's at. So I'm I'm surfing the couch right now. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Most definitely. Most definitely. What about you, Nikki? Well, I will say that the pandemic definitely has spoiled me. Um, mm -hmm. Being able to afford three services in one day and mm -hmm. you can actually okay. enjoy Sunday, 
not having to get up at five o'clock in the morning to be at sound check at six thirty. You know, you have two, three services, but I have attended some churches um, on a Sunday helping out singing. So that kind of, you know, kind of weight balances out a little bit, but. I really do enjoy recording, pre-recording, and <laughs> using my Sundays as a travel back to Atlanta day, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. You know, so I, I'm i kind of half and half with it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And what do you guys think while we're talking? Are you in church? Are you miss it? Are you in church? Are you going to church? Or are, are you not? Or are you just virtual? Um, and I'll just say for myself, I remember when we first went into quarantine, so my brother, I was on calling his whole name out, Willie Reed Jr., better known as L. He's been going to all these online churches there. He's, he's always like, yeah, I went to your church today. I went to this church today. I went to, you know, because I asked him, hey, did you go to church today? And he'd be like, yeah, I went to like four churches today. And he'd be talking about online. This was before COVID, right? So when COVID hit, I told her, I remember the first month we were out, I really missed church, like being there. And I was like, man, I miss church. And he was like, give it a little time. You're going you gonna to love it after a while. And boy, when I tell y'all, y'all going to be having to pull me back into the house of hope, like physically. Because <laughs> I feel so like, and I, and I really want to thank God for our pastor and the praise team and the production because it feels like I'm there. I don't feel like I'm missing anything. We have our Life University groups. And like Kat and Deidre are part of my, of my group. So I see them. I talk to them. I have, it's like 30 of us in the group, in the class. So I still have the fellowship. And I mean, I'm good. And I never in a million years would have thought that I would think that way. So I'm one of them 7% that's like, okay, I think I'm going to come first and third. <laughs> I'm going to do like I used to be back in the day. We had a church on first Sunday, third Sunday, second and fourth. So you know, we'll work it out, but yeah, that's me. Anybody else got anything to say on that? And what y'all think? Make sure you all are uh, telling us in the chat. Well, I guess all my right. thing is like, when you're watching it virtual, mm -hmm. at home, I find myself doing other stuff while it's going on. That is true. I'm in church, I'm, I'm focused, I'm into it, but when I'm at home, mm -hmm. it's like I'm washing dishes, doing something else, and I can't really, really get into it. So that's the part that I miss, yeah. the focus part. Yeah. 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 And that would be a problem for me. Go ahead, Nikki. Like, but for me, again, like, just being a part of the production piece of it and actually experiencing what you all see is like, all right, I already got mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. She ain't right. <laughs> I agree. It's really Experience. Like, I wish, I mean, Laria, you've been at some of our tapings mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Pastor Smith can't, can't even preach. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. to watch it again, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my God, like, we went in this Sunday. Like, wow. And then mm -hmm. just to but, drop and then do But it you feel again. it. Yeah. But, Kat, do you not feel it, though? You feel it? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and the one thing that I try to keep in mind each Sunday when I get up and it, you, you know, I'm, I'm an hour behind you guys. So I'm, I'm getting up extra early, but I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I'm facilitating, my, facilitating myself the same way I would if I was there in person. So I'm getting up. What, what would I look like on a typical Sunday morning? Let me not just lounge around in the bed. Let me get up and actively be ready to be a part of the worship celebration, even wow. though they're in the home. And it feels just like you're there. I mean, to, to be honest with you, there is no difference for me. I honestly feel like mm. I'm right there with them in the house of worship at the time. So it works for me. I love it. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. Look, switching gears, we're going to a whole nother uh, current event. We're going to talk about Haiti. Look, we're going into Haiti now. This is our next hot topic. Look, I'm, we're going to get all in there today. So there's an article published by NPR um, that stated that thousands of Haitians, um, Haitian migrants were deported back to Haiti. And I know we've seen that women, children, families, people, hardworking people. These are just not freeloading people who just want to get into the U.S. These are workers, people who have livelihoods and all of that. Um, and many have been living in South America, but due to the pandemic and a lot of the jobs being lost, um, and I know that many of you, I don't know if everybody watches the news, but Haiti has been through so many earthquakes. They've had hurricanes. They, I mean, it's always one thing after another. So a lot of people left. 
And so they started coming to the border of the U.S. to try to get in, and we are deporting them back to Haiti. So do you all feel that that's fair due to, I know recently we had 95,000 Afghans come. There are other Europe, European countries that bring people in all the time. You know, what do you all feel? Is the system fair? And you all can just go. I'll let Kat go first this time. Absolutely. Um, no, uh, it, it, there is no fairness in this. And it mm -hmm. always begs the question, why is it always different when it comes to people who look like you and I? That mm. is the, the biggest issue that I take with it. Um, right. Where was when you think about Title 42, which is what they're using, you know, as the main leverage for why they're deporting the Haitians back uh, to their country. It, it best to differ. A few weeks ago, why was that not the same card that was played when we were bringing the Afghans into the mm -hmm. country from a nation that we've been at war with for 20 years? Why does it all of a sudden, it's different when it comes exactly. to those who look like us. And it's it to me, honestly, it's infuriating. It it, it really is. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, it pulls at your heartstrings and it frustrates you because we continue to see it time and time again. It's like where where does the forward progression come in for us? So it's it's a mm -hmm. frustrating situation. That is so true. That's so true. Um Nikki, what do you think? Um I feel like if if you're gonna send one group of people back, you might as well send all of them back. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's definitely not fair that we are, you know, singled out regardless if we came from uh, Egypt or the Haitian, wherever. Um, mm -hmm. You have to do it for all immigrants that are trying to mm -hmm. come over to America, right? Because we know why they migrated here in the first place. They, they want their freedom. They want to do things that they can't do over there. Like you said, earthquakes, thousands of people are dying. And so they feel like for me to live and to allow my children to live, I want to go somewhere where I can be free and yeah. get whatever it is that I need. So if you trying to send us back, they want horses, you know, whipping yeah. us to get back over, over the water, do it for everybody else. Everybody. That's so, right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. I agree. Deidre? Um, I agree with Nick and Kat. I mean, it's, it's not fair. It's not fair. It's just yeah. like it's always the same thing. It's just not fair. Yeah, yeah. And there's millions of, I don't know if it's millions, but it's thousands of people that come to the U.S. to be citizens. You know, and I think that, um, it, like Kat said, the darker your skin, the harder it is, it seems like, to get in. And that's a problem. That's a major problem. I just feel like, go ahead, Nikki. I'm sorry. And two, it's like, it's so hard for us to come to the u.s and it's hard for us to leave the u.s to go other places as well so it's just like you can't win for losing like anywhere we go out the country they're gonna always single us out and pat us down at tsa in the back room you know when absolutely you know the other color just fly right on by with their drugs and everything else that they have on them but with us you know i can't even i can't do anything Mm -hmm. you know, so it's, yeah, it's sad. It's very sad. It it's is. triggering. It's, it's very triggering. You know, just as she was saying to just watch Border Patrol horseback and just you're, you're throwing whips at these individuals, the triggering flashback that it brings to a time and place when that was a reality for people that look like us every single day for it to be 2021 and to just visually see that it's just mm -hmm. the the way my blood boils i have to stop and say jesus just bridle me right mm -hmm. <laughs> because it infuriates you it's it's just it's horrible to see most definitely most definitely Had this epiphany based on what your grandmother had done saved money for six months paid off debt slept on the floor and because of this conversion moment you literally are sitting on the board of a bank that wouldn't have even given you a loan i was a pastor of a church i was spending so much money dressing like a preacher driving preacher cars if i'm if i'm spirit filled the same holy ghost that makes me shout can make me wait Wait until I can afford a BMW and stop giving money, donating money to big banks 
paying them 18% interest for the right to use their credit card to buy something I can't afford. It's a mentality. Uh, moving on to our next subject, uh, women and burnout. So uh, there's an article published that I just read in Time Magazine. As you all can tell, I'm a little nerd. I love reading articles and different things um, that's happening. Um, but there's an article published by Time Magazine that said 42% of women say that they have felt consistently burnt out from work in 2021, this year now. Are you a part of that group? <laughs> and why do you feel women? are feeling burnout. Do you all feel the burnout from work or from just life in general? And do you understand what these women are talking about? We'll lead off with you, Nikki. <laughs> so um, I'm an educator uh, and um, teaching in the pandemic was very stressful. Um, dealing with parents, you're dealing with students who don't have internet, the weather goes in and out. Um, administrators, they want you inside the building. Um, and then you have some that, you know, it's just their opinion about how they feel about vaccinations and COVID testing and different things like that. Some require it, some doesn't. Um, so now being burnt out, I am strategically like making sure that I'm not getting burnt out. Right. So mm. if I feel like if there's you know, too much on my plate. I'm going to let my, you know, principal know, like, mm, that's, that's a little bit too much. I don't feel comfortable, you know, because again, I'm young. I don't have any children. And as the article that you're talking about, you know, we have women who um, don't have childcare, right? Or they're monitoring their students virtually. So now like I teach virtually and inside the classroom. So that can be stressful, but I try not to put as much work on myself as I would if everybody was inside the classroom if that makes sense you know right I try right to be compassionate i try to be compassionate uh, with my students and then compassionate with myself and just say no i yeah. can't do it nope i won't be able to stay extra i my answer is no in 2021 <laughs> right so, therefore, i am going like not trying to get burnt out because i understand how it is because if you dodge there tomorrow they your job description is going to be on somebody's indeed That's within right. 24 hours <laughs> that's right it's the truth so true what do you feel about that deed your burnout in 2021 do you feel it or do you understand it uh, i understand it i can't really say that i feel it um i'm a real estate agent so um of course when the pandemic first happened everything kind of slowed down for a minute and we had to be safe um like showings and stuff was was um held off um, a lot of people didn't want you in their homes. So, of course, we had to prepare the buyers for that because they needed a place to stay. So they want to get in there mm -hmm. and see it. So we had to redo a lot of stuff. Um, but as far as feeling the burnout, I don't feel it, but I do understand what everybody's going, you know, what everybody's going through, especially with kids, no child care, um, all of that. Even with um, having to take care of my grandmother during the pandemic, it, we could not mm. even, even get her out of the house and take her places, like go to the park or, you know, because she's elderly. So that was that time was very very stressful, but I understand that I don't feel the burnout though. <laughs> okay, okay, that's a good thing. That's fair. Oh, what about you, Kat? How are you feeling the burnout or not? Um, I haven't personally felt it 
thank God for that. But I do recognize and understand it because I have been there. And I think the thing that we have to keep in mind with so many women is that now it's even tougher to find that work-life balance because work has become home. So it's no room to even now separate the two. You're, right. you're in the home working all day, then you're dealing with the children. If you're married, you have a husband, you're trying to keep out the household. You may be in a situation where you're taking care of elderly parents. It's a lot to consider overall. And everything is just so convoluted and messed together now. So it's, yeah. it's I can understand how it can be hard and difficult, it's, it, but we have to find ways to set boundaries as, as women. You know, it's, it's okay to say no. Yeah, it's okay to say I That's need a break. It's okay to not be okay. It happens to all of us, we're human. And I think especially for black women, we put this cape on our backs consistently and pull this, this super girl thing and you're human. You can only take but so much before it becomes system overload. So it's necessary to take that time back. Even if, it, even if you have to go hide in the bathroom for 15 minutes, you have to take it. You have to find a yeah. way, you know, to create those areas of boundaries for you to take a breather and just, you know, regroup. It's necessary. Most definitely. Amen to all of that. And if you're watching, are you burned out? Put it in the um, comments um, and let us know what you're feeling like. Are you a part of that 42% or are you a part of the Look, I'm not good at math. Whatever that percentage is, the other group is a little more than half. <laughs> it's a little more than half. I ain't do well at math, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, but I think too, one thing that we're forgetting about is all of the COVID procedures, all of the sickness, all of the death that we hear about on a regular basis. We've got deaths on top of deaths, and even in our church family and friends and people who are, you know, it's always pray for me. My so and so has. COVID. If we don't, if it's not close to you with somebody you know or somebody that they know. So I think that that's one of the, you know, mental things in the back of your mind, like, ugh, it's always happening. It hadn't really let up and it's still going and things are not normal anymore, as we call it. So I think we've got to give ourselves some grace and set some boundaries is what you, I heard you guys say, setting boundaries and, and moving forward. <laughs> Y'all agree? Agreed. 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 All right. Something in pop news, guys. We got to talk about this Kelly Price situation. Um, so I went from being, I'm all concerned. I'm like, oh, Lord, Kelly's missing. Where is Kelly? Oh, my God. We can't find Kelly. They're like, we went to her boyfriend and he don't, he's not cooperating. And then the lawyer came out and said, you know, Kelly is fine. And then the sister came out and said, I ain't seen my sister. Then Kelly finally comes out and says, I ain't talked to my sister since my mom's funeral. <laughs> I ain't seen her in a year. And, I, and I'm like, what? And then she talked about this, all these things. So um, she was declared missing with a conflicting report. Um, so do you all believe that this was some kind of publicity stunt by her family? Do you really think that they thought she was missing? Or what? what is your take on it? I'm sorry, would she be drunk? <laughs> what do you think about it? <laughs> Find Kelly. <laughs> mm. I, I, <laughs> it's just crazy. I, I want to say a publicity stunt, but I just hope she's okay. It, it's clear something's yeah. going on there. Um, mm -hmm. I just hope she's okay. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. <laughs> what about you, Kat? <laughs> I'm I'm just like, can Mr. Big's crew find <laughs> where to at? Like, I'm so lost. I'm so lost. I'm like, I hadn't heard Mr. Big in a minute. Girl, come on, somebody. <laughs> you know, I understand that as celebrities, we, you know, celebrities have a right to their privacy, but once you have yeah. that public platform, it opens you up. <laughs> to fans who genuinely feel like they have a piece of you and they share genuine right. concerns for you know for you to allow it to go on for that long and then the first that we hear from you is through an attorney and they're not physically seeing your face it's 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 a mess i'm i'm so yeah. lost i don't you, you can't <laughs> say is this publicity is it just you know tension within families uh, and, and uh, an overreaction I, 
I'm lost because you know you're you're saying that the COVID bout for you was two months ago. They lost you <laughs> just, just for two months. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Anybody feeling like cat? <laughs> I'm trying to laugh. Uh, I'm like, but the thing about it is, you know, that's a serious thing when somebody is missing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know if they're dead or alive at all. And you know, the R and B community, the gospel community, everybody was like, Where's Kelly Price? Where's Kelly Price? You know, it was a whole situation. Nikki, what's your take on it? Cocaine is a heck of a drug. Okay. <laughs> and good night. <laughs> oh Lord. We coming off the day. There you go. <laughs> go ahead, Nikki. It is, so it is definitely a lot. Um yeah. being in the industry. You do have publicity stunts, right? Mm -hmm. um, and she doesn't have a good rep mm -hmm. from the last couple of years for yep. shows and things like that. And so sometimes people have to conjure up something to make a comeback. And mm -hmm. so, you know, with her family, like you have to, when it comes to like missing persons report, you gotta be careful when you, you know, foster you with something because you, you really do have to like, um, you gotta, whatever consequences come to you, like you gotta pay those dues. You know what I'm saying? That's um, right. But she, she also said that she had a, something called long COVID. Whereas it was long longer. hauler. She meant long hauler. <laughs> Did she mean long hauler, not long COVID? <laughs> I'm just like, I'm trying to look. I'm trying to help out. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to help out. You know. But here's, but here's the thing. It's like the family versus her, right? So mm. you never know what the family motives are, and mm -hmm. who's to True. say that she had COVID or she could have been in a different type of hospital, because she also mm -hmm. said in her interview that she wow. has to rehab herself to be ready for concerts. So it's like when you start listening beyond the surface, you just never know where she'd been all that time. Now we could all assume where she was, but family, you know, they have a way of trying to really exposing you without exposing you. Mm, wow. Sense, you know, and so like she said, I ain't talked to my sister in a year and you family, mm. listen, We'll do any and everything for fame, money. And I, family is just, you know how to yeah. heal. But mm -hmm. um, I'm glad she's safe. I'm glad she's alive. She died. And we all, I guess, may have died. You know, we, we supposed to kill our flesh daily, right? You know, you're supposed to die. Oh, you ready <laughs> Why well, don't you hide behind these? I'm trying to hide behind three no cars. I'm trying not to laugh. I am very happy that she's alive and well. She looks good. You know, she looks Yeah, she does. Her. Yeah, so I'm just looking forward to see if there's a single coming out within the next three months or so. Wow. She should know. entitled the album Lazarus. Get up. I'm putting Nikki and Kat are going to Friday Night Live with Pastor because that's where y'all need to be. I'll throw y'all in there. Friday Night Live, he doing Smith, Kat, and Nikki Brown. That's what it need to be from now on. I'm putting y'all on. Yeah, but the good news is she's safe and she looks well and she looks like she's coming around and I am glad that she is because we i was really concerned though because i was just like what what's going on you know what happened and then it was like okay attorney said one thing and the sister was like i have not talked to my sister then they were saying about the boyfriend thing and then they, I, it was just so many reports and everybody's like i mean okay so yeah 
Yeah, it was definitely a lot. The sister said boyfriend. Kelly Price said husband. Child, they all confused. Yeah, it was. We was all over the place on that. The scan, a simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you. But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at savedbythescan.org. Um, a little game, yes or no, and I'm going to talk about one of uh, one of the many topics that's a big deal right now, and this pertains to you. Would you do it, yes or no? Okay. So the first thing is, um, there's a, tr a growing trend right now with women proposing to men. Would you do it, yes or no, Deidre? You cannot cuss in this either. <laughs> I can see Cat's face like, wait a minute, we, <laughs> we, <laughs> Cat. <laughs> I guess I could just take that as a no. <laughs> okay, that's a no for you, Nikki. That's a no for you. They can't say no nothing right now because okay, that's a no for them. Okay, yeah, that's a no for yeah. Don't girl. They say it's an, it, it. You know, it. You don't have to wait on the man to do it. You can do it. That's what the what they're saying. Now I don't know nothing about that. I don't understand that, but that's what they look, that's what well, they I say. He doesn't want to if he didn't do it. Exactly. Part. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a mess. Yeah. Okay, second thing. <laughs> After hearing and seeing the details of R. Kelly, is he muted or canceled for you? Deidre, we had this conversation. I love his music. <laughs> I hate the whole thing. Um, yes, it's support, awful. Would I support new stuff or no? No. But I mean, yeah. R. Yeah. Kelly has been around since I was a teenager. I mean, right. his music, not him, but his music. You know, very talented man. I hate the whole thing. Um, I don't think he's muted because there's still a lot of people that love him and a lot of people that still don't believe he did it. And mm -hmm. I really don't think he's muted. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Cat? Muted, cancel for you, R. Kelly? It, it's a no for me. You can't, you can't mute what has become classic or legend. You know, um, mm. does does he need some help? Has there been some things and some tremendous flaws and hiccups for this gentleman? Absolutely. But I mean, I'm I'm not canceling TP2.com because that's my joint. I'm not gonna be able to do it. <laughs> I love it. I love it too. That's why she's all here with what's happening. What about you guys online? Are y'all canceling R. Kelly completely? No more R. Kelly at all. No more no more music. I ain't talking about nothing he's gonna do. I'm talking about in the past. I believe I can fly for the same. <laughs> all of those, all of those songs. <laughs> Nikki, what about you? Um, no. I mean, he's a creative guy. Like, I wouldn't cancel any of his music or any or mute him at all. Like, his gifting is different from his personality. Like in real life, like he 
put put out great music. That's who he is. That's how I know. I don't know him personally. I mean, my heart goes out to the ones who might have, you know, been victimized by him or whatever, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very unfortunate situation when you watch all of the things and it's sickening. That music, man. Okay. All right. Our next question. Do you believe women can have it all? And we're talking about the the family. Excuse me. Let me rephrase the question. Do you believe women can have it all without lacking something? Meaning, can you have it all without something falling through the cracks? Like your career, your family, the husband, the, you know, can you do it all and nothing fall through? Um, Deidre, I'll start with you. It's not, I feel it's going to always be something. Um, mm -hmm. Can we have it all? Yeah, I think we can, we can have enough. Yeah, we can have yeah, yeah, that's a good. Yeah, cat. What, what about you? I'm gonna say no. Um, okay. Listen, you you can chase it all. You can have it all. Maybe not necessarily seeing it as something lacking, but something is gonna be compromised. You may not. Mm get it the way you were thinking it was going to come. It may not be exactly what you thought it was going to be. Something along the line is going to be compromised within that situation because if you, we're not perfect people. Because if you, right. you know, right. if you're trying to chase it all at one time, that's where that burnout starts to come in at. You're doing too much all at once at one time. So I, for, for me, it's just a no. Okay. Okay. Nikki, what about you? It's a no for me as well. Um, like Kat said, something is definitely going to go lacking. Like you can have a house, car, family, everything, but are you really happy? You know, um, but on the flip side of that, what does it have, having it all looks like for a particular person, right? Because having it all right. for me may not be <clears throat> as much as the next woman. Right. So me being single with a dog, a career, and that's it. it could be just enough and I'm happy. Um, so it just right. really kind of depends on the individual. Yes, most definitely. I agree. I think that it depends on the person, too, and time management. Um, but I think you have to put what's important first. Like if you have a family and children, I think that should always be number one and then kind of circle everything around it. But you've really got to manage your time if you're going to do it all. I think that, you know, it can happen, but you, you got to be on it, <laughs> like for real, for real. And, and you can't factor in things that go wrong. So, yeah. Um, okay. And our last thing, does sugar grow, go on grits? Does sugar go on grits? Deidre, does sugar go on grits? That's you better did. not. As a child, it did. Where you from? Here, Atlanta. <laughs> That's the only way I would eat it. <laughs> really? Well, you know, you put sugar in anything, people are eating. That's why we all, yeah, people got diabetes and everything else that age. Oh, what about you, cat? Listen, sugar going great. Here, what you guys say? Call me country ratchet. I need some sugar on my grits. You don't have to drown it. But you know, without sugar, you're eating sand. It's sand, Laria. No, like, it's not. You do sand. You gotta spice the sand up. You know, a, a plain grit. I need a little bit of sugar on it. Now, if we're gonna do the sophisticated thing, we're gonna do the shrimp and grits, and of course, no. But right, if okay. I'm doing a basic breakfast at home, give me a little country ham, some thick fat biscuits. I'm gonna need some sugar. Okay. I, I don't care. I don't care. John Piki got a song for y'all. Nikki, what you uh, what you say? Um, well, I love salt on my grits. Um, I'm from the East Coast. If you put sugar in grits, you might as well eat cream of wheat or just get some oatmeal. That's what I'm right. saying. Like grits, no, not sugar. I mean, it, it has to have that little salty taste. 
And if you put the shrimp in it, like she, like Kat said, you're not gonna put sugar on your uh, shrimp. You are gonna put some spices, some salt, pepper, you know. But uh, yeah, it's salt for me. Y'all gonna get kicked out of house a hole with Pastor Smith here. Um, I've seen a lot of people do that too, and I was like, when I came to House of Hope, we would eat in between services, and I would see people put jelly in there. I had never seen that before. I didn't even know people put sugar in their grits till I came to it. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> what is happening here? <laughs> what are we doing? But I think, and this is just a little tip, this is a country tip, to give you some flavor. If you cook your grits in chicken stock or any kind of stock, it will give it a good flavor as well and it won't taste for some of y'all that need extra whatever because you feel like it tastes like sand really salt and butter and season your water and your grits will taste good that's just a little look i'm just throwing that out there for free like the preachers be saying <laughs> yeah for real your grits will be like fire that's why people say, you know, I'll eat shrimp and grits or whatever, but they cook that, that stock, that seafood stock that they had. Okay. So you can do it then, but do it that way. It'll taste good. Yeah. But anyway, sugar does not go on grits for the record. So I don't want anybody leaving the pink table talk believing that that is correct. So y'all don't listen to the two ladies in agreement on that in the black. <laughs> don't listen to them. John P. He got a song called Sugar Don't Go On Grits. Literally, go look it up. <laughs> It's awesome. <laughs> we don't believe that over here in holiness. But anyway, that is all the time we have for today, you guys. It has been such a good girl. So this was a real pink table talk. We really had a good time, y'all. I enjoyed you guys. Um, for those of you who participated with us today, thank you so much. We had Deja Stafford, Kat Braxton, Nikki Brown. Thank you all for being on. And we're going to have to come back and do this again. Because we really didn't get in it like we could have got in it. But next time, we're going for the gusto. We're going all the way in. I'm pregnant. Of fact. They got to come back. <laughs> Any last words, ladies? Anything y'all want to say? <laughs> have a great week. All right. <laughs> okay. You guys have an awesome week. And thank you for watching the Pink Table Talk. And we'll see you the next time. Love y'all. Bye. <laughs>